Okay, praise be to God. Today's video <coughs> is called, Are You a Priestly Family? Amen. Is your life, and is your family actually a priestly family? We're going to be looking <coughs> through the scripture to see what exactly makes your family a priestly family and to see and understand the specialness of what a priestly family is. We need to go back to Exodus chapter 13 when the children of Israel have come out of Egypt. God has amen, said to um, Israel that from now on all the firstborn that opens up the matrix belongs to God. Amen. But God changed his mind later amen, in Numbers chapter 8 when the people of God begin to behave badly. And he said from now on only the Levites, the priestly families are the firstborn mine, praise be to God. So, amen, to belong to God, meaning that you're actually his special treasure, like he says when he makes up his jewels, praise be to God. Not hay, wood, or stubble, but precious jewels. You have to belong to a priestly family. And that's different than being part of Israel. Amen, praise God, because it was all of Israel, the firstborn, that were gods that belonged to God. But then in Numbers 8, it was only those of the priestly family, praise God. So if you want to really know that you, praise be to God, hold a special part, that you've become the apple of God's eye, amen, you may be an ear, you may be a nose, you may be part of the body, but to be the apple of the eye of God is different. The apple is something that, of the eye that you can't touch. Try to touch your eye and you, you, you blink. Amen. It's something you're not able to touch. Meaning if someone comes, amen, touch not my prophets to touch you, neither do, um, touch not my anointed, neither do my prophets any harm, you don't get away with it. You, you can't get away with it. Praise be to God. Why? Because now those who are born only of the priestly families are, praise mine, like Samuel, amen, the firstborn of Hannah was given to God. Amen. Praise be to God. Amen. Amen. For the purpose solely of God. Amen. So it's a form of truly becoming special. Now, of course, everybody's special because what of Christ has done. We understand that. But here it's not just what Christ has done. It's what you have done. Apostle Paul repeatedly, um, Ephesians 4, let us walk worthy of the kingdom of God. Amen. And Timothy, that we suffer. And Thessalonians, amen, that we might be found worthy of the kingdom of God. Praise be to God. Amen. And, and how do we, amen, walk worthy of the Lord? God said to Abraham, walk before me and be thou perfect. Amen. We now become part of the priestly family. Amen. It means you're first in the queue. You're first in the queue. When Daniel prayed, the angel said to him, Daniel, from the first day that you prayed and fasted, your prayers were heard straight away. Not like James said, those of you that ask, that were double mind, you ask amiss, think not that you shall be answered and receive anything from God. Why? You're not part of the priestly family. So if you want to be heard, amen, you want to be the front of the queue, praise God, you want to receive the blessings of God first, amen. When God said to Abraham, all the families of the earth should be blessed for you. I will make of you a great nation. Amen. Those who bless you, I will bless. Those who curse you, I will curse. Inside of Abraham was that priestly family. So let's look, praise God, the difference of, amen, from being the firstborn of Israel. It was to be God's first. God changed it and made it only the priestly families. Amen. Praise God. Let's look at Numbers chapter 1. And these are the things that you've got to do. If you want to be part of the priestly family. Amen. Praise God. Like we have in the book of Revelations. Like we have in the book of Zechariah. That all the nations of the world. Come and bring their goods into the city of Jerusalem. They're not part of the city of Jerusalem. But they're allowed to enter and bring their gifts. Amen. Are different from those people that dwell there. And are forever with the Lord. Amen. They are ever with him. That's the priestly family, praise God. So let us look at Numbers chapter 1. You have, praise God, those who come out of Egypt must be out of Egypt one year. Amen, praise God. You must show God, amen, 
You've come out of Egypt, you've exodus. Every day you have a desire to depart from the things of Egypt. You don't want to be part of the world. Amen. And that must be continuously seen for a year. Isaiah 61, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, has anointed me to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And what's the acceptable year of the Lord that you've come out of Egypt? One year you show that you're serious. Praise be to God. Amen. And inside of that, amen, then a census, a numbering is done for those people that have a desire, an ability to go to war. You have an ability to go to war. Amen. Praise God. And that's part of becoming a priestly family. You have an ability to war. You have to, from the minute you get up to the minute you go to bed, understand that there's things you've got to fight. Amen. You have to fight the sin. You have to fight the flesh, the lust of the eyes. You have to fight the good fight of faith, Paul said. Amen. And if you have the attitude after coming out of Egypt, you develop an appetite to fight. you got to get up and fight the devil. Praise be to God. Amen. Jude said to contend for the faith. And once you do that, then you're numbered amongst Israel. So see, they say what we're doing is be numbered amongst Israel. Amen. And then when you're numbered amongst Israel by deciding to come out of Egypt and you want to fight, then you go on toward the priestly family in chapter 2. And then a census is done for those people that encamp by the standard of their father. Honor thy mother and father. Amen. But is there a standard that you've been taught? Amen. The Bible said those who are bastards cannot enter the congregation of the Lord. Praise be to God. Why? There's Deuteronomy chapter 23. Because no father means no discipline. You have no discipline. A father, um, uh, put the, uh, Hebrews chapter 12 said, um, All that God, amen, he was, all his sons, amen, he chastises and rebukes all those who he loves. That's what a father does. Amen. Praise be to God. And if we have a standard, a discipline by which we encamp by, which we desire, David said, let the righteous smite me, it shall be a kindness to me. We need the correction of God. And if you do, then you're numbered amongst Israel. Amen. And once you're numbered amongst Israel, that doesn't make you firstborn. No, no. What does firstborn mean? That you have preeminence. Jesus is called the firstborn of all creation. Amen. It may just means he's first place always. Why? Because he said, I do always the things that please my father. He's first place. But to be first place, you first have to be numbered amongst Israel by doing these things. Coming out of Egypt one year. Amen. Having a desire to go to war. Number three, praise be to God. Living by the standard and discipline of your God. Once you do that, now you are numbered amongst Israel. But that's not enough. You desire to be firstborn. You want to be first to receive the blessings of God. You want to be held first. David said in Psalm 70, Psalm 71, make haste to God to help me. Make haste to God to help me. Why? Because, amen. Because he knew that he had become first place. And then you have, praise be to God, amen, chapter 3. Now we go on to the priestly family now. Now you enter the priestly family. Are you able to do it? Then you have the three priestly families, Gershon, Marai, and Kohath. And Gershon means to divorce. Amen. To divorce from evil. To divorce from your past. Amen. And sometimes divorce proceedings can take two, three, four, five years. And sometimes it's very expensive. Excuse me. But you have the desire to divorce from everything that's wrong. I don't want to sin. John said this in the first letter of John. I write these things, sorry, second letter of John, that you would not sin. Jesus comes, chapter 3, to destroy the works of the devil. You have a desire to stop sinning. Amen. That means now you're entering into the priestly family after you've been numbered. You've got to be numbered amongst Israel first, but that doesn't make you firstborn until you start becoming part of the priestly family and Gershon, the first family that you desire to divorce from evil. And not just to divorce, not to go back and to marry in Jewish law, it's forbidden to return and to marry the same woman. We can do it in Gentile law, but not Jewish law. And once you enter that first priestly family, now you enter the Marari, which means to work hard. Nehemiah, Haggai, said, have a mind to work. 
We've got to have a desire to work. Jesus said, work while it is day. That we're not saved by our works. We're not justified by our works. We're justified by our faith. But faith for that works is dead. Jesus says, so let your light shine before men that they may see your good works and, and, and boast about you. No, glorify your Father which is in heaven. Praise be to God. That's Mariah. You've got to see put in hard work. Amen. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. You know, people can't do it for you. You've got to do it for yourself. You've got to get up in the morning and seek God for yourself. You've got to rise and fast and pray yourself. Amen. You've got to pick up the Bible and read it for yourself. And once you begin to do that, then you've entered the priestly family of Merari. And then you have the last and the final priestly family, which is Koar. Then you begin to understand what it means to feel holy. You'll be purified. As John said, stir up your pure minds. You start to see, blessed be the pure in heart, Jesus said, Matthew 5. For this is the kingdom of heaven. You start to, to feel the purity, the sanctification. As Peter said, all those who are called through sanctification of the spirit. You start to feel there's a sanctification going on in your life. Praise be to God. Amen. That shows you're part of the priestly family. Praise be to God. Amen. And then Koath. Amen. Koath is in charge, excuse me, of all the articles inside of the ark. They wrap up the spoons and the knives with, with, in woolen cloth and everything is protected and special clothing. And that's what you'll feel when you become part of the priestly family. You'll feel a special protection on you that you won't feel if you're just numbered. Amen. It's not just enough to be numbered amongst Israel. We now want to be part of the priestly family where we're specially wrapped up in cotton wool and protected and become the apple of God's eye. And when we've done that, then we'll see the blessing that follows in chapter 5. Praise be to God. Amen. Where it says that those who have got leprosy and those who have got running issues are put out of the camp. What does that mean? Leprosy is caused by unwise speaking. We'll begin to put away now we're part of the priestly family. Now we, 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 we are first born unto the Lord. Why? Because we now control how we talk. Those with issues, praise God. I mean, that bleeding and issues and running issues, what happens, I mean, issues mean that things are out of control. You're starting to get control of things in your life. You're not out of control in your emotions and your fears and your passions. Everything's in control. Praise be to God. Why? Because you're now Gershon, Barari, and Koath. You're part of the priestly family. That's what now makes you firstborn unto God. Amen. Yes, you may be part of Israel, but being firstborn unto God, when you're first, you have the privilege, you get blessed first. You're always at the front of the queue. Those who bless you, I will bless. God said to Abraham, praise be to God. Amen. Because you're now part of the priestly family. Amen. And then it says that the law of jealousy, where a woman can um, die through the bitter water, you won't have that in your marriage. You won't have that. Praise God. That won't arise in your marriage. Praise be to God. Why? Because you're truly part of the priestly family. And you're part of the priestly family. Amen. Praise be to God. And then you'll be able to go on to chapter 6, the, the, um, the law of the Nazarene. Where his hair grows. That means now you're no longer your hair in control. You're out of control for God. I mean, God's got the control now. You belong only to God. You don't even notice your hair grows long. You're just too busy looking at God. And then you get the blessing of the, amen, the Nazarite. The Nazarene, praise God. Amen. Which is, they said, the Lord bless thee. The, Lord, the blessings of God will be on your life. Amen. The Lord causes his face to shine upon you. That means seeing Jesus. Seeing the face of God. Moses talked with God face to face. That's what happens when you're first born. Praise be to God. Amen. That's what happens when you're now part of the priestly family. Amen. Amen. And may the Lord give you peace. You'll have peace and then you'll be able to tell that you're part of the priestly family. You've got the blessings of God in your life. Amen. You can see the face of God. You speak with God face to face. You can hear him clearly. And as a result of that, you have peace. And that go together. 
You can't, if someone comes, I hear the voice of God, but they don't have peace. That means they don't have the priestly blessing. Or someone says, I have peace, but they don't hear the voice of God. That's not the priestly blessing. If someone says, I hear the voice of God, I've got peace, but God's not blessing me. That's not the priestly blessing. The priestly blessing is triune. May the Lord bless thee. You feel blessed. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you. You see the face of God. You see clearly in the will of God. And may the Lord give you peace. See the triune blessings in the priestly family that you have. Praise be to God because you're now part of the priestly family. Amen. And if you have that, then the blessing is there with you. And then what you have in chapter 7. Everybody's equal. Everybody's told and commanded to bring the same for God. And what you find in the church where everybody is part of the priestly family, everybody does their part. Everybody's equally wanted. Everybody is equally valued. Why? Because you're all part of the priestly family. And that's where it ends, chapter 8. When God now tells Israel, now, no longer, is the firstborn belong to mine. Amen. Praise God. It's the firstborn, praise God, from the Levites, from the priestly family that belong unto me. And you can tell that you're part of the priestly family if you've done everything in Numbers chapter 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. If you see that, then you'll know that you're part of the priestly family of God. Amen. Praise God. Firstborn. Amen. Praise God. Preeminence in all things. Amen. Why? Because we desire Amen. To come out of Egypt. Praise be to God. A delight to go to war. Amen. Praise God for God. To, to live by the rebukes of God. To be part of Merari. Working hard. Gershon divorce. Koah being holy. Wrapped up in cotton wool. Control over running issues in our life. Control of how we speak. Amen. Only God's got the control. Everything else we just let grow and we forget about. Apostle Paul said, I cut all things but done for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus. And that's the sign, praise be to God. Amen. That you've now stepped into the priestly family. Amen. Praise God. What an awesome, an awesome chapter. And sadly, if Israel had understood that, then all the rest of the things and numbers, the disasters that happened, wouldn't have been necessary. Why? Because they did not understand the value of chapters 1 to eight, praise God. So give God thanks and thank him. Amen. From the, the priesthood which God Moses said to Koath, is this a little thing that God has given you the priesthood? What a sad fate of affairs when people look upon the priesthood as being something small. Amen. But they don't realize being part of the priest family puts you always to the front of the queue. The front of the queue is not for your flesh. The front of the queue is that when you bless people, they're blessed. When you help people, they help. When you teach people, they're taught. It's all for the sake of other people. Praise be to God. And that's why it's important for God to raise up a priestly family. That's why the song says, I am building a people of power and I'm making a people of praise. The priestly family that will move through this land by my spirit and will glorify my precious name. Build your church, Lord. Make us strong, Lord, in the body of your Son. Build your church, Lord. Make us strong, Lord, in the body of your Son. God bless. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Joshua, from your comments. Thank you, everybody. Tammy, God bless you. Amen. For all the children of God. And I pray this video will be a comfort to you as you step to the front of the queue. Amen. The Bible said there came a day the sons of God to present themselves. But Satan came amongst them. Why? Because people, the sons of God, begin to lose sight of what it meant to become a priestly family. And may that not be the case with us. In Jesus' name, let's pray. Father, thank you so much for today, for your mercy and your compassion. Amen. That we truly, Lord, would be part of the priestly family. That you will, will be done in our lives, Lord, and you will be glorified. Amen. Through your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you.